welcome to the Wednesday edition of DC Today. I have a few economic data points to go through with you today, a couple market updates, and I'll get you on your way. It's a reasonably boring day in markets, meaning that the Dow was down a quarter of a percent, the S&P was down half a percent, NASDAQ was down a little more than half a percent. So everything was down, but not a ton. Bond market was down as the 10-year was up four basis points. So slowly but surely, it's gotten back up to 4.1%. Obviously, uh, the yield is way lower than the 5% it was at one point in October, but it also is higher than the 3.85 it was just a few weeks ago. So that's really behind the kind of uh, market environment right now. You really don't have any massive sell-off days. You just don't have many updates. Like the market's just sort of down a little bit every day right now. And we'll see if this earnings season that we're going into will, will reverse any of that. Um, it is a bit of a buyer strike and I think a theme behind uh, my in my year ahead paper that we put out last week was that the Fed would end up being a very overrated component to how people are viewing the markets. You know, the, the futures were at about an 80-something percent chance of the first cut in March, and now it's down to 65 percent chance. So you still have a greater than half likelihood of a uh, rate cut in March. I personally think it could very well end up going to May. I don't think it matters at all. But certainly things, are, uh, it matters to short-term noise and, and so forth. And I think that's what you're seeing a lot of that now. Um, maybe markets just sort of repricing various expectations that uh, come around wh what the March rate decision will be. And a more substantive set of economic news, which also tied in very much to a theme of ours for 2024, um, was the China economic growth data for last quarter coming in at 5.2% annualized, 5.3% have been expected. But more importantly, it was the third consecutive quarter of a consumer price deflation of quarter over quarter lower prices. That has not happened in China in 25 years. It was 1999. Um, and so the theme we have about where China will go and what they will do to treat this sort of uh, deflationary force they have infecting their economy and what degree they will choose to Japanify, I think is a significant theme for 2024, and you're already seeing some of that play out. Uh, anecdotally, just kind of moving through some of the things on my mind this morning, 60%, this is stunning, 60% of the high-yield bonds that are rated either double B or B plus are now trading above their par value. Um, it was only 20% of bonds, so th those are the two higher ratings of the junk bond ratings. So still, you know, lower quality ratings of credit uh, worthiness, but at the higher end of the of the bad stuff. If you follow me, and 20% of those bonds were trading at their par value or higher, and now 60% are in that entire universe. That's a massive rally, speaking to improved financial conditions, improved expectations for liquidity improved uh, access to, but especially cost of capital, all serving to tighten spreads and improve the pricing, obviously, in the high yield bond space. Uh, the economic data point that came out today that's probably most covered in the media um, is retail sales. They were up 0.8% uh, core sales uh, month over month. Uh, what a surprise that it outperformed expectations. This is the biggest broken record I have seen in all my years of covering hundreds of economic data points. The amount of times that some retail or consumer oriented number comes in higher inspected and everyone sits around shocked. It's like they've never met an American. Anyways, online sales closed the year up 7% from the year prior. Food, beverage, clothing all had meaningful increases both in the month of December but year over year. And total, I just want to point out, full year 2023, retail sales were up 5.6% year over year. So whether you think the inflation rate was 25 3, 3 and a half, no matter what, you had a retail sales number year over year that was roughly uh, in the range of being doubled out of the inflation rate. Um, so as I say in the dctoday.com, with recessions like this, who needs 
Keynesian stimulus. I sometimes write the jokes for myself. The biggest public policy issue on the table for the next 30 days will be the Ukraine deal tied to a U.S. border security deal, potentially tied as well to Israel support. Uh, I remain as a political junkie with very little expertise in sausage making on the Hill, um, but nevertheless a lot of experience watching others who have expertise. I have absolutely no idea how they get a deal done here. The daylight is so significant between the two sides and what they each would expect to give on the other component, it just strikes me as totally irreconcilable, um, but we shall see. So as I mentioned, Dow down 94 points, a uh, quarter percent. Uh, a rare day, by the way, where the best performing sector was negative, and that happens a lot in big sell-off days, but that happens almost never in a day that isn't down that much, like today. The s and is down half a point, and the Dow was down a quarter point, and yet the best performing sector was consumer staples, which was down 12 basis points. The worst performing sector was real estate, which was down 1.8%. Uh, oil still, you know, right there near 73 a barrel. It seems to me to have been in a very tight range for some time now, something in the range of between 70 and 74 a barrel. That's very tight of a bandwidth for oil price volatility. It was up a few uh, percent, uh, excuse me, basis points today. Industrial production up 0.1% in December. It was supposed to be down 0.1%. It was mining output that increased. Auto production had a sizable jump. 1.6% of the month. Non-auto manufacturing was down. Um, utilities output decreased. So there was a mixed bag, but within the aggregate data on the full year, high-tech equipment uh, was up 18% year over year. So even what was a more um, dormant year for industrial production, high-tech equipment moving much higher. And then finally, the NAHB Home Builder Sentiment Index did jump seven points, but it jumped all the way to 44. You know, 50 is at that kind of uh, critical mid-level. Still, um, it was five points better than had been expected. Uh, the present situation moved quite a bit. Uh, expectations moved, and that kind of makes sense with mortgage rates dropping. Uh, but it's foot traffic and prospective buyers that are still just very, very low. But nevertheless, the sentiment at least feels a little bit better. Not necessarily a surprise given lower mortgage rates. So Brian Seitel is going to bring you DC Today tomorrow. I will be at our Phoenix office uh, meeting with clients tomorrow. And then we have a, a dinner event for clients in Arizona tomorrow. So very, very happy with what is happening at uh, TBG's Phoenix location, the Mountain West region where we opened an office um, in early Q4 of just last year. I'm looking forward to being out there tomorrow. And then I will have Dividend Cafe for you on Friday with a real uh, uh, comprehensive update of our Q&A, just lots of questions that come in covering multiple topics. You'll have that in your inbox Friday as always. So I'm gonna leave it there. That covers kind of the basics in the market today, the economy, the big things happening, and we welcome your questions anytime. Uh, please uh, send those, if you have more of them, to questions at thebonsongroup.com. Uh, the good portion of them get through to me. And with that said, Thanks for listening, thanks for reading, thanks for watching the DC Today. Mm -hmm.